Hi Q Club members, it's Josh here. Welcome to the SkiCo Learning Center. In this online clinic, you're gonna learn how to ski powder with flow. You're gonna learn to master the skills required to ski your first time through powder or develop advanced tactics that are gonna make you a pro powder skier. The first thing is you're gonna to need to narrow your stance to ski powder. Now the reason why you narrow your stance is because if you imagine you're standing on powder snow, you're going to sink, okay? Now as you sink, if your legs are wide apart, one, if it's the outside ski, because you're pressuring it, might sink lower than the inside and your skis might get all tangled up underneath the snow. So legs together while you're skiing powder means that as the skis sink, they sink together. So you're able to keep your feet working and your skis working through the snow without getting crossed or tangled. It's important as well to understand the weight distribution from outside ski to inside ski. Now in powder snow, it's going to need to be more 60% on the outside, 40% on the inside. This is because again, if you're pressuring the one ski too much, it will penetrate and sink deeper into the snow and your skis have a higher chance of getting crossed or blocked underneath the snow. So while you're skiing through the powder, it's incredibly important that you engage the muscles through your core, okay, and down and through your posterior chain. These are the muscles that just go down pretty much the back of your leg. Okay, so this, these, this set of muscles will act as a stabilizer, or I like to call it an anchor for the middle part of your body so that you can have stability with the upper body while allowing the legs to work through the snow. Okay, so here is a little stationary exercise. Now, all of us Q Club members, we know who Harry is. Same. So this is a little stationary exercise to help you develop the feelings for muscular intensity to match the resistance that powder snow is gonna give you as you're skiing through it. Because remember, you ski through the snow, not on top of it when we're skiing powder. So what I'm gonna ask Harry to do is he's gonna grab just one of my skis. Now you can do this with a friend or a family member when you're next on snow or with your ski co-instructor, okay? And what is gonna happen is I am going to engage my core, my glutes, I'm gonna feel some contact on the shin muscle and I'm gonna sort of plant my heel down into the ski boot. And what I'm gonna ask Harry to do is just slowly move me forward and back. So Harry's gonna move me, and what you notice is, my, is everything moves. Both my skis move, and my whole body moves with the skis, okay? Now, if I were to do this, we'll do it one more time, Has. If I were to do this again and have no engagement in my muscles, what you'd see is Harry just really move one of my legs. As soon as I engage my muscles, you see both skis move, and my whole body moves with the skis. Thanks, Harry. Now that's a good static or stationary exercise to develop a feeling of muscular intensity in your skiing to match the resistance that the powder snow will give you. It's important that when you ski powder, you're adapting and adjusting your turn shape to give you the best chance to flow through the powder. On piste, we're typically gonna be making beautiful, round, C-shape-like turns. But once we get into the powder, we're gonna to have to stretch those out and they're gonna become thinner turn shapes where there's more distance traveled down the hill than there is across the hill. This is because the snow acts as a little bit of speed control, the friction of the snow. So you open up the turn shape to help you flow through the powder so you don't get stuck. When you are skiing in powder, you essentially have two arcs or two turn shapes. So you have a lateral turn shape similar to what you will have on piste. And you also have a vertical or down and then back out turn shape. You have to imagine that your bursting through the powder with each turn that you make. 
The more you finish or shape the turn, the more the powder has a chance to hold your skis and to really just stick you on the spot. When you're skiing in powder, it's important to understand when the skis are able to turn. If you imagine that your skis are underneath 50 centimeters of fresh powder snow, it's going to be very hard to turn them or edge them or do anything. They're sort of locked underneath the snow. So what we need to know is when is the best time for our skis to be edged or to be turned. And it's when they come out of the snow or they're right by the surface of the snow. Okay, so what we're gonna think about here is introducing some hops, okay, to allow the ski to come up to the surface of the snow. And as the ski comes up to the surface and you feel a sense of weightlessness, if you will, when you're at the top of your hop, that's the time to edge the ski, that's the time to rotate or turn the ski to give you the most efficient way to create your turn shape in powder. Once you feel comfortable with your hops and where to turn in powder on gentle terrain, it might be time to ski some trees. Tree skiing in powder is awesome and an amazing experience. When it comes to tree skiing, there is a simple focus point or cue that you can think of. And this is that you ski for the gaps. Look for the gaps between the trees and you ski through them. If you visually mark out your line, at least for two or three turns, and you look for the first two or three spaces between the trees, then this will set you up for success as you ski through the trees. How you advance your skiing in powder is the same as how you would want to advance your skiing on piste. You look to create more performance from the ski. Now this is done through edging the ski. So trying to focus on increasing edging movements, tipping or rolling movements of the legs to get the ski onto a higher edge angle is how you begin to advance your skiing. Then what you want to do is you want to try and increase speed because the faster you go, the more performance or edge angle you will be able to create because the forces acting on you when you go faster allow you to move your body further inside the turn, aiding in the creation or development of edge angle throughout each turn. If you're going to be leaving the resort boundary to go on a more backcountry powder adventure, there are a couple things that are vitally important. One is you have the appropriate safety gear. So transceiver, shovel, probe, skins if you're gonna be, if you're gonna need to walk anywhere over a long distance. Also having a travel plan. So telling someone where you're going, what time you'll be coming back, having a map for understanding the route you're gonna be taking, the line you're gonna be skiing, okay? All of these things are trainable and I strongly recommend that you get training either with us at the SkiCo or with your local avalanche safety provider on how to maneuver and navigate the backcountry in the safest way possible. Once you leave the resort, you are going to be stepping into avalanche terrain where it's uncontrolled and really mother nature, she does what she wants and nobody wants you to be putting yourself at risk. Thank you for watching all the way through this Skiing Powder with Flow online clinic. We hope you've enjoyed the information that's been shared with you today. And if you would like to take a personal approach to developing your powder skiing, please book a powder experience with us at the Ski Co. You know where to find us and I hope this helped your powder skiing.